Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. The smaller the scorpion, the more potent the venom. Written by Dathuan. Ram and Arn watched as the small, almost speechless blob lanked up to the bar, which was level with its chest. It was nearly 1.9 meters tall, proportionately. Its limbs were quite thin as well, the thickest parts of its limbs being barely a third the diameter of its chest. Arn was famous in these parts, and every time a newbie walked into his bar, he felt it was his duty to provide an exhibition of the other regulars. He was known throughout the quadrant as the toughest barroom brawler for a thousand light years in every direction, and he enjoyed the benefits of that title. It had afforded him quite the lifestyle. Having such an individual take up residence in your bar meant fewer fights broke out, lest they attract the attention of the seasoned brawler. He drank for free and even got paid to patronize particular bars. This bar was especially attractive to those types, so the famous brawler was more important than in most others. Situated in the expanse between two galactic arms, the Manifold was the only bar on the refueling station for 50 light years and a convenient rest stop right in the middle of the 100 light year trade route. Granted, this particular trade route wasn't nearly as popular as others, but it was considered faster than the other 600 light year long way around. But the vast emptiness generally was hard to navigate, and, for quite a few species, mentally disturbing. This also made it prime target for piracy. As a result, the merchants who frequented these routes could only afford, or convince, the truly desperate to man the transports. It's hard to be desperate in the intergalactic society. You have to be a special kind of jerk to be desperate enough to need to work in the expanse trade route. This particular kind of jerk in question was the violent kind. People steal because they're lacking in life. Most societies figure out by the time that they become interstellar, that most sapiens would rather work than steal, but violence, that proclivity, being more primal. That's what Arn and Ram were. Primal. Primates, in fact. Arn eyeballed the human as it ordered a drink and elbowed Ram. You ever see a human around here? Ram sipped his drink. Nope. Arn grinned. Always heard they were crazy. But you know what they say, smaller the monkey, the louder they howl. Ram just shrugged. Why don't you go and find out? Arn chuckled and rolled out of his chair, standing to his full 2.5 meters and slipping on his knuckle boots. His arms were long, even for a primate, being nearly 2 meters in length on their own, and nearly as thick as a human. As he meandered over, he grabbed onto the bar with one hand and lifted himself onto the stool next to the human removing his knuckle boots and hanging them on the hook under the bar. Say hey, you're a human, huh? Arn said, tapping on the bar, indicating that he wanted a fresh glass of his usual. The human seemed a bit startled that someone was talking to him. Huh? Um, oh yeah. Never seen a human way out here. Uh, what brings you around? Oh, just wanted to see the galaxy. Can't really do that running freight for human companies. And the only ones willing to employ my kind are in these kinds of places, I guess. Arn chuckled, a low, quiet sort of ooh-oh sound. Well, the while only truly desperate end up way out here. Meh, that's kind of nice, he shrugged. Then did a standing jump up and over the stool, landing squarely on its seat. The gravity is a bit of an issue, though. Arn was confused for a second, but shook it off. Too high! Nah, way too low. 2.5M, that's like a quarter of what it's back on Earth. For the first time, Arn actually looked at the human. Really examined him. The standard jumpsuit worn by hairless species was very revealing. And in his years as a brawler, he learned to size up his opponents. 
Not only was his musculature clearly visible through the material, but even his vasculature in some places. The human's knuckles were almost calloused as his own. The skin on his forearms was thick, scarred, and taut, clearly revealing every artery and muscle as he reached up for his glass. This is going to be interesting, Han thought to himself. Given that you're new out here, I take it you don't really know much about galactic etiquette in these kinds of establishments. Oh, I've heard stories, but for the most part, yeah, not really sure. The biggest guys challenge the newcomers, right? The human smiled and rubbed the short, bristly hair on the top of his head. Han dropped his jovial tone and adopted a serious one. That is the way we do things out here. You must understand, we have to discourage unruly behavior. I'm guessing that area over there is isn't a dance floor then. The human looked over to the shallow pit in the center of the large room. Arn chuckled at the attempt to derail the inevitable. I understand you've probably heard of me as well. Unfortunately, there is no escape in this, especially since you're the first human we've had out here in this sector. My professional reputation is on the line. I have to make an example of you for other humans to understand how to behave. The human just sighed and slid out of his stool. All right, let's make this quick. Arn followed suit after slipping on his knuckle boots, slowly making his way over to the informal ring with an exaggerated swagger. This drew people's attention. It had been a while since they'd seen a fight given that Arn's reputation kept the rabble in check. Even though he hadn't fought in a while, he still kept in good shape, training daily. The human looked well-trained as well. He was almost excited, but knew how things would turn out, especially given the human's small stature. As he stepped into the ring, the human was stretching out his shoulders and legs. Good idea, thought Arn. I'd had quite a few drinks. It'll be good to get the blood pumping. He tossed the knuckle boots onto the side of the ring and began stretching. After a few rotations of his shoulders, a nice stretching of his fingers and forearms, Arn moved to the center of the ring. The human followed suit. So, uh, is there a bell or signal or something? Arn was the signal. He reached forward with one of his massive, powerful hands and gripped the human shoulder, looking to lift him up and slam him down to establish dominance right away. But he didn't, or rather, couldn't. The human was dense. He must have weighed just as much, maybe even more, than Arn. After failing to lift the human, he went to use two arms, but didn't have the chance. Before he could even lift his knuckles from the ground, a hand shot up and wrapped a third of the way around his armed wrist and squeezed hard. A cracking sound indicated that the bone had snapped. The human's grip was like a pneumatic vice. Even as the sound of his breaking forearm was still reverberating in the silent room, the human twisted around and flung the 2.5 meter tall gorilla man up and over his shoulder, slamming him into the ground, following it up with a single lightning fast punch to the chin. The next thing Arn knew, he was lying on the couch in the VIP lounge with Ram and the human standing over him, conversing about something Arn couldn't quite make out. He let out a groan. Oh crap, are you okay man? The human stepped over to him. Ram tried in vain to hold the human back, simply grabbing onto his upper arm and getting dragged forward. It's all right, I was a corpsman in the... a medical specialist in the human military. I know medicine. Ram just shrugged and gestured to Arn. The human held up a finger. Follow my finger with your eyes. Arn followed the instruction, but had to ask, How? How? How are you so heavy? How do you knock me out in one blow? How are you this strong, even though you're so small? The human continued to work as Arn spoke, checking the back of his head, examining the wrist, and so on. Oh, uh, well, I guess that's more to do with my home world. Back on my planet, gravity is about 9.8 M. I guess we just have to, uh... Hey, Ram, uh, do you guys have a first aid kit around here? It, uh... We have to be like that just to withstand the gravity. Plus, um, we're kind of apex, apex predators. Apex, apex predators, Han said hoarsely, not sure he understood. Uh, yeah, we hunt other apex predators, or we used to. 
They're mostly extinct now, you know, from the hunting. Arn's eyes began to water. At times, Arn had thought of himself as an apex predator, the top of the galactic food chain. And there was an entire species of sentience that evolved to hunt apex predators. He hadn't felt fear in a long, long time. He was supremely confident in his strength, durability, and combat prowess. Having that confidence shattered by such a small being so publicly was overwhelming. It welled up in his chest, flooded his throat, and overflowed from his eyes, tears trickling down his face. He couldn't speak, but was mouthing words. Oh, hey, hey, you're all right. I'll get you patched up in a... Thanks, Ram, he said as Ram passed him the first aid kit, which seemed comically oversized in the human's desperately small hands. In no time, all right? Ah. Could only stare in awe as the monster administered expert, albeit a little fast and sloppy, medical care. Alrighty then, you'll be okay on. Just a few bumps and minor fracture. Sorry about that, by the way. There were four Canadian before. You're all patched up and good to go. Arn couldn't even speak. His face twisted in terror. His throat too dry to produce sound. He just held his palms up to the human, staring down at the floor. His entire career flashed through his mind. He had done this to so many other beings, he had never imagined that it could happen to him, let alone by someone that appeared so weak at first glance. When he looked up, the human seemed worried. Is he going to be all right? I'm pretty sure I took care of everything. Ram just shrugged. Never lost a fight before. Oh, shit. It's all right. Sorry, hey man, let me buy you a drink. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.